Another person that you should probably look up in your book, this is Rachel Carson. Rachel Carson was an influential writer as well. She was writing in the 1960s, and she had a very famous book called Silent Spring. And Silent Spring was referring to the fact that we were using a large number of synthetic chemicals. We were spraying pesticides and herbicides, such as DDT, all over the place. DDT was being sprayed to control mosquitoes. And what DDT does is it softens the eggshells of birds that have been consuming food that has DDT in it. And so it was poisoning the birds, softening their eggshells. And so when the bird would land on its nest to uh, keep its eggs warm, the eggs would break and it would would kill the baby bird inside. This was causing the demise of a large number of birds, including the bald eagle, which was our national symbol, and it was rapidly heading towards extinction. So there was public outcry about these chemicals and the use, the unregulated uh, destruction of our environment that we were seeing in the 60s. This led to the first Earth Day. This led to the EPA being formed to control um, what was being released into the environment. This led to the Clean Air Act, the Clean Water Act, and the endangered Species Act, which brought the bald eagle back from the brink of extinction um, uh, and, uh, and re restored eagle populations throughout the country. Unfortunately, Rachel Carson never lived to see any of these policy changes in the federal government because she died of the very cancers that she was warning us about uh, through our use, widespread use of synthetic chemicals. There's a more up-to-date version of this picture in your book, and it shows you over time how things will influence our view of the environment and what we need to do for the environment and some of the major international conventions that have uh, come into play um, to try to control what we we're doing on the environment. And so you can see sometimes it's, it's grassroots movements or it's um, international meetings uh, that uh, make people realize that uh, internationally we need to come together and solve some of our problems problems. Sometimes it's a scientific dis discovery. Oh my goodness, look what's happening. Here's the science beside behind it. Um, and uh, here are some possible solutions. Um, those possible solutions can result in, in um, international treaties, um, international conventions where we agree on how to solve the problems. Other times, unfortunately, it's an environmental disaster that makes us start to do things. Um, I suspect the next version of your textbook will include uh, the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant partial meltdown in uh, Japan. And that has already led to some countries deciding that they are no longer pursuing uh, nuclear power. Uh, just recently, Germany announced that 50% of their electricity comes from nuclear power. They are abandoning their nuclear program. They will be shutting down those nuclear power power plants and they will be converting all of that electricity to come from renewable sources of electricity. So all of this falls under the umbrella of environmental ethics. Ethics, you're talking about your morals, how you determine what is the right or wrong thing to do. What are your values? What do you think things are worth? And that helps you make those decisions. And when we're talking about environmental ethics, we're talking about these moral relationships between people and the environment, between humans and the world around us. So what is the right thing to do? What is the wrong thing to do? So understanding what your underlying philosophy is helps you determine your morals. So you look at what you value, decide what your morals are, and then you can decide whether what you're doing the right or wrong thing. And it causes you to do a lot of self-examination, whether you're as a country, whether you're in a company or as you're acting personally, you can be looking at your moral relationships with the environment. And when you're doing that, there's some questions you need to be asking. Uh, first question here, do we have special duties or obligations or responsibilities to nature? Do we have a responsibility that a species is going extinct because we're using its habitat? Or that uh, the water is becoming poisoned because we're flushing things down the toilet? Are there ethical principles that should constrain what we're allowed to do and how we should modify their, our environment? Are there certain things we just shouldn't be doing? I shouldn't be uh, spraying a chemical on my lawn that's going to spray... Um, uh, onto my neighbor's uh, yard and poison their children or poison my pets or poison the, the birds that are in the neighborhood. Uh, so are there things that, that uh, should constrain how we use the environment, how we modify the environment and why? 
And there are just certain things we want. There are certain things we need. Um, I need to get to work. How do I look at my responsibility, my obligations to the environment, um, and weigh that against my my own values and my own interests? And, and how do we make our decisions? And that's a constant examination of what we're doing and the decisions we're making. It takes a constant decision making to decide whether something is worth your doing it, uh, whether you really need it, whether uh, that's valuable enough to you for you to um, harm the environment in gaining that. Take a look up the terms sustainability and stewardship. And I want you to be able to come up with a definition of both of these terms in your own words. Sustainability, the resources have to be available for the future generations. We can't use everything all at once. And how are we going to do that? What are the management steps we're going to take? What is the stewardship? How do we take care of the resource, take care of the land in order to have it sustainable? And I want you not only to be able to define these things, but give examples, that illustrate um, what is a sustainable resource, what is a resource we're trying to sustain, trying to keep uh, for future generations, and then um, give examples of the stewardship, the management, the steps you take in order to ensure that that resource is going to be available for future generations. <laughs>